everybody, welcome back to the studio today. It's a little bit dark and ominous in here, got some moody music going on. And uh, that's because I've been setting up and working on a still life demonstration for charcoal drawing, light and shadow, called The Things I Hoard. So uh, let me turn this all around and uh, get back to you in a second. All right, so here we go. This is a, a still life that I've set up for this demonstration, and it is um, contains all of the things that I found myself uh, hoarding while during this uh, Corona apocalypse, and and those things include. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit better light on this sriracha, and um, yeah, there we go. Some sardines. Of course, you can't uh, not have those. I've got some uh, nacho jalapenos, lots of that, some uh, <clears throat> top ramen, of course the toilet paper, and I found one of the first things that I did was put in a big order to Dick Blick and get a bunch of art supplies. So that's the things that I am hoarding. I've got them all set up here. I decided to backlight this still life because I wanted these sort of um, moody, ominous shapes of these shadows coming out. Those are pretty awesome and powerful. And the, the, the little rhythm that you see coming out there is due to the quality of the light that I'm using to backlight this with. So um, I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you in a few minutes uh, the materials that you'll need, including how to make your own charcoal. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and uh, so there we go. You good? Okay. So uh, the objectives for this drawing are are listed here. Um, the uh, the main objective is to emphasize the quality of the light over the objects. And I've turned the lights back on in my studio. So in that still life that was heavily backlit, I'm looking for a sense of the light and shadow over a sense of the objects that, that are there. So um, I'm wanting to work with perspective and proportion, but they are not as important to that sense of light and the sense of the value masses. So those are subordinate uh, aspects. And when you set up your, your still life, I don't want you to underestimate the power of the shapes of the shadows. So as you light things, Look at how the light and shadow quality work together to create an exciting composition. Um, remember from uh, the, the classes that we were working on before, light is a hierarchy. Um, so pay close attention to the structure of the light, from the highlights, light tones, mid tones, the shadow areas that include a cast shadow and reflected light. Um, Pay attention to the individual qualities of those lights, and the, the light and shadow areas, and how they relate to one another. Also remember, there are three kinds of edges. There are hard edges, between one form or another, or uh, between um, uh, hard and soft edges of a cast shadow, perhaps. There are soft edges, which are the, the spaces that have a smooth gradient between, say, a, a light tone and a shadow area as the form turns. And there are lost edges, and those edges happen especially uh, between areas of uh, close value where perhaps one form seems to blend into another. Visually, it looks like that. So you need to pay attention to the areas, or the edges, hard, soft, and lost. Um, the process to go through to uh, engage in this project, first of all, have fun putting together a still life of objects that um, you found yourself hoarding throughout this uh, time. Pay attention to the lighting that you're using. Use a desk lamp or, or whatever that you have around to uh, light your still life. Um, Begin your drawing by making at least five thumbnails. So uh, get a, a piece of paper, uh, set that aside for those five thumbnails. And do those thumbnails looking at light and how the light and shadow structure work together to create a good composition. Once you have an idea of the final composition that you want, then um, go ahead and move to a larger sheet of paper. Um, for a reference, 
uh, someone to look at who's really, really good at uh, charcoal drawing and light and shadow. Look at Professor Eric Elliott. Just Google search Eric Elliott, and you'll see it's definitely his paintings come up, but uh, also his charcoal drawings are fantastic. He's looking at light, um, not at objects, and that's really what uh, the things that you should be studying uh, with this project are, getting some good practice at that. Um, okay, so now um, materials. What you're going to need, uh, what is best, I should say, for uh, charcoal drawing is paper that's made specifically for drawing with charcoal or pastel. And that is uh, paper that's got a lot of um, texture and, and little wells in it. Um, this is, uh, I believe, an aquabi paper. It is a gray tone paper, so when I begin to draw, I'll be drawing with um, different kinds of charcoals and some white chalk in order to get those light tones and highlights. Um, they make all different colors and values of this stuff. Um, you're going to need... Um, Let's see, let's start with uh, vine charcoal. This is fun to talk about. So the uh, vine or willow charcoal, burnt grapevine, you, you buy this uh, commercially. Um, and it is a fantastic uh, tool to draw with. Um, it moves very easily and you can get a wonderful gradient of value out of that. Um, it blends very easily. This is a blending stump. Um, and so I'm not going to use my finger because it's got grease in it and the fingers, this, this has a nice point and I can use this to uh, blend and soften edges. Look at that beautiful soft edge quality. You have to be very, very delicate with charcoal and um, have a relaxed hand, arm, uh, elbow, wrist, all of this needs to be relaxed in order to blend all of these uh, bits. Can't go. I can go after it, but um, that is a different game. So uh, the uh, advantage to the vine charcoal is that it erases very easily. So I can take this uh, kneadable eraser. I can lift it out like that to begin to create uh, light areas in in dark shapes. And I can erase it to where it's almost gone completely. Um, as opposed to compressed charcoal. Now, compressed charcoal is uh, vine charcoal that's been um, ground to a dust and then reformulated, in this case, into a circular shape. It's right now it's in this charcoal holder, which um, is great for easel drawing. Um, the advantage to this is it gets darker quicker and you can see it scumble sort of across the surface of the textured paper. It also will blend very very nicely and get those gradients, those beautiful gradients very easily with this stuff. And um, it will erase to some degree but it doesn't erase quite as easily as this stuff. So that the glue in the binder sort of glues everything down. So the disadvantage to this uh, product is that you can't lift out the uh, lights as easily as you can. So and, and you get a very similar kind of charcoal in your charcoal pencils. Um, and so look at that. Quality of that dark is fantastic. Um, but it does not like to erase very easy. So I can't get that all the way back out without really grinding at it. In fact, I can't get that back out at all. That's going to be there. So if I want that area back to light, I've got to come in with a white charcoal pencil. And there we go. That's what that's for. And so there's my light tones and lights in there. And I can again use my blending stump to blend those areas fairly well. Um, other things that are handy to have around. I, 
I like to use, back up a little bit, I like to use all of these turquoise together. I'm going to start the drawing uh, massing with a lot of the, uh, the vine charcoal. I'm just going to put, lay in big areas of dark. I'm going to cut in uh, my light shapes with the, the charcoal. Then, other things that are handy to have around, I like a nice soft brush to have around. Because that way, I can take this overall drawing and I can soften all of those edges. And then I can come back in and I can re-establish different kinds of edges and different values. Hard edge there, pull that out to soft. Um, and then come back in and refine edges and shapes. So to speak. So it's a process of building up and tearing down and building up and tearing down until I get an overall form formulated like I would like it. It moves very easy. Um, so other things that are important to have around, like I say, a nice soft brush. Uh, this, by the way, is a very cheap brush from Dick Blick, but very nice soft two-inch uh, brush that I just use exclusively for charcoal drawing. Um, in order to sharpen my, my pencils, I, I want to advise against these little handheld pencil sharpeners. They're all right uh, if the blades are very sharp. Um, the action of turning the pencil in that sharpener can break the, the charcoal up inside that pencil and it'll just fall apart sometimes. It's very frustrating. So what I prefer to use is a um, X-Acto knife or cutting blade like this. And uh, this I had all sharpened up and I dropped it. The tip broke. So I'm going to resharpen this right here. Before I start a drawing session, I'll uh, sit down and sharpen all the pencils that I'm going to use so I don't have to stop the drawing process. In order to do that, hopefully I don't drop them and break. So that's another thing that I'll need. Another thing that is good to have is a chamois, and I, I don't have one here, so I'm just to use this blue shop towel and that's uh, that's for blending and and pushing uh, the charcoal into the paper um, it's a good thing to have around okay um, another thing that you're going to need that I don't have here either is spray fixative um, and that's for a final fixative for the drawing once I get it done I'll spray it so that it, uh, with the spray fixative so that it doesn't um, uh, smear as I, as I try and, and save it. I will also use, oftentimes, the spray fixative in the middle of the drawing. So I'll build it up, get it to a certain point that I like, and I'll spray fix it very lightly so it's still workable. Lots of fixatives are called workable fixative, so that I can continue to erase and draw into it, but it's not going to smear so easily. Um, so... Um, one last point and then we will be done and I'll set you free to begin to uh, draw your uh, projects. Um, build your drawings up uh, slowly. This is an additive and subtractive process which is, makes it fantastic. You're not just adding line to line to line or whatever uh, to create your final drawing. Build it up, tear it down, build it up, tear it down, looking for that exquisite sense of light and shadow. Um, once you find that, stop. Um, what you need to have uh, for the, the product project to be complete is the final drawing, a picture of the still life that you're drawing from, and a picture of the five thumbnails that you created in this process. So there you go. Have a fantastic fun time drawing. And a big thank you to my camera person, 
Nala Butler. And uh, there you go. Well, I almost forgot to talk about the uh, process of making charcoal, So, which is a super fun thing to do. Um, what you need to do in order to make your own uh, vine or willow or that kind of charcoal is to um, procure an old box. This is a uh, Russell Stover handmade chocolate container. It's a, a chocolate tin that um, used to hold some of those nasty tasting uh, cherry filled chocolate candies. Anyway, those are gross, but the tin is really good. And so what you want to do is get a tin like this and fill it with um, pieces of uh, grapevine branches. Uh, what, I, what I did uh, in this experiment was uh, cut some grapevine vine branches, some other types of vine material, some willow from down the road, um, and even some pieces from my poblano uh, and jalapeno chili plants from last year. I've still got those uh, around, those vines, and I cut them down into pieces and put them into the uh, t chocolate tin, bound it uh, a little bit with uh, tightly, shut with some wire, um, and then put the whole tin into the charcoal remains of a backyard um, campfire that we had going. My, my wife and daughter um, the other night had a little bit of a, a family um, backyard fire. And when that was all over, uh, I pushed these down in, this tin down into the uh, remnants of the, the fire and those hot coals and let it set overnight. And so what you get is a Oxidate, oxidized reduction somehow. This you would need to ask a ceramicist or a sculptor who deals with charcoal more about the chemical process of this. But what you get is the charcoal remains of the um, of of the uh, branches without them burning into ash, and it makes really great charcoal. So this um, this is a piece of grapevine right here. And you can see it works just like normal. So there's no shortage of uh, charcoal to be had. No reason to pay uh, Windsor and Newton or Dick Blick an exorbitant amount of money for vine or willow charcoal. One last note. The harder the wood that you use, the lighter the charcoal is going to be. So I, in the past I've done this with um, pieces of uh, harder wood that I had in my wood shop, um, like uh, pine or cherry even. And that stuff makes a very light, hard charcoal. Anyway, it's fun to play around with. Enjoy, have fun, stay safe.